And we're on. This is the Let's Talk Cheer podcast, and I'm your host, Jason Larkin. Where we talk cheer, we talk life, and we talk whatever comes to mind. Five, six, seven, eight, let's get started. Turn it up, you tune in into Let's Talk Cheer with Jason Larkin. We're talking cheer, we're talking like you know we're always talking. So listen up, you boy, about to go all in. Five, six, seven, eight, we're on, let's begin. This is episode number 27. Not sure if there's going to be a 28, but thank you for joining. I'm your host, Jason Larkins, and back with us again. She's here. She's back from her long summer vacation hiatus. Lots of things have changed. Don't be less when you can be more. Brittany, welcome back. We missed you. I know. I missed the podcast, too. Um, Happy to be back. Yeah, it's good stuff. We're 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 about to get back to the way, back to our roots. You know, we got away, we did the yes. interviews, and it was it was cool. But you know, I'm ready to actually talk some cheerleading, and um, you know, so we'll make it happen. But yeah, um, me too. Last time we saw you, you were you were out there hustling produce, and now <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing nowadays? Be more. What's the new digs? Oh, my husband and I decided it was time for me to uh, retire, as you would say, um, and just stay home with the girls um, and just be do that stay at home mom thing. So I'm not really one to just like sit around all day. So I took up a new profession. Um, I'm doing lash extensions now, um, just while the twins are in school. And uh, it's been going good so far. So, you you know, so so we'll see how it works out. Shameless plug right here. If you need to get your lashes done, you know, you have prom or I'm not sure what else you get your lashes done for. You just want to go out to Fiesta Friday. You get your lashes done by B more. You're looking good. She'll get you looking right. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's right. Give me a call. Yeah, there you go. And look at right there on the on the page. You see her Instagram right now. (laughs) But anyway, so not only have you been up to lots of different things, um, lots of things have been happening in the cheer world, actually. So I figured that'd be those are some great things for us to talk about. Um, Varsity made some changes to the score sheet. USASF has some new divisions. And then that new documentary, um, what the darker side of cheer is. out. I'm figuring we're not going to talk about that today. Maybe we'll both watch. I have not watched it yet, but I'll figure we can... We can both watch it and then kind of do a reaction video, just our our raw thoughts on the whole documentary. But, you know, and then we got obviously the question of the week and then the quote of the week and anything else that we talk about. Sound good? Sounds great. But before we get started, um, let's do the like, comment, subscribe, share to the podcast. We appreciate your guys' support and any continued support. Uh, let's keep it coming because we want to keep doing this. Yeah, let's do it. Now Now that I've started doing this, like every time I'm on YouTube, I like like the video. I'm like, man, that was a good video. I'm going to like the video and show my support. So if you're actually yeah. enjoying this, you know, if you actually enjoy the podcast, then just hit a little like. It takes a millisecond to do it. Like it, <laughs> share it, you know, suggest it to someone, you know, it really truly helps out the channel. And yeah, like you said, motivates us, keeps us going. And here we go. But let's let's dive into this. So be more a few podcasts ago when we actually talked, we talked about the new varsity score sheet. They just come up with new, you know, the whole new system. And Mm -hmm. you had said, hey, well, is there anything they didn't fix about the score sheet? And I was like, well, you know, there's a couple of things that they they didn't fix. One was the ranges. And I said, well, it's not that big a deal. We've been dealing with it, but it is like the. I understand why they keep, or at least I have re I think I understand why they keep the ranges close the way they do. And so I'm okay with that. It's just like the one thing they could fix in a perfect world. So, but the other thing that really bothered me was the, they changed the way they award co-ed stunts. Now you may or may not remember this, but they said they, they changed the way they awarded co-ed stunts. So in the previous system, last year's system, what they did was they list out a, a bunch of stunts that you can do. And if you're boy, and it only applies to co-ed teams, right? So if you have a boy on the team, your boy has to do a co-ed stunt, right? The guy and the girl, and it doesn't have to be the guy and a girl it could be a girl and a girl it could be a guy and a guy, whatever, but you have to do a co-ed partner stunt. 
And if you do a walk up lib to the top, you get the full amount of points. If you do walk up extension, you get like, you know, 4.8 and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and it goes all the way down to you did nothing. So you get zero points, right? Anyway, walk up lib has always been the, the standard. And I remember telling you what they did was they reduced the, the difficulty of the, the top stunt. So before you could do a walk up lib and they changed it now that if now you don't have to do a walk up lib to get all the points, you can do a hands lib or like a prep lib to get the full points, which makes sense. It goes, okay, it's technically an easier stunt, but if you don't take your boys through that whole progression, like what we did was we just taught the kids walk up libs. We didn't teach them hands lib. We just said, you know, we're just going to teach you walk up lib. Um, our boys got walk up libs and that's what we've done. Or, or our girl, shout out to Kennedy Brogdon. She did our co-ed a couple years ago. Um, but that's what we did. We just went straight up to walk in lib and that's what we've done. And they said, a bunch of people in the comments that day asked, well, can you still do walk up lib in order to meet the requirement? And no one ever answered anything on the, in the comments. So I emailed um, our West coast scoring, you know, person. And then I emailed um, the two other people in charge of scoring at varsity. Uh, right. Um, Stephanie and Justin and, and you know, Nick is our guy out here on the West coast. I said, hey, um, so are we able to do a walk-up lib and still get credit? And, you know, it was just a, no, it's it's a walk-up hands lib, right? And I was like, ah, that kind of sucks. And so what I did was, this is a real true story. I filmed our boy at practice and I had him do, and I just called him out. I have, I have the tape running and I go, hey, Damien, do a walk-up lib real quick. Right. And you could tell we weren't practicing this, especially from the video. The kids are just like walking around. So, hey, Damien, Destiny, do walk up lib. And they go and they do their walk up lib and it's solid. I go, good, do it again. And they go and they hit it, it's solid. And I go, hey, um, Damien, Destiny, do walk up hands lib. And they go, okay. And they go and it's death, like she's falling all over the place. I go, thank you. <laughs> Try it again. And it's death. Right. And, uh, you know, they go, they do like another, I go, Hey, do a walk up lib again. And they go and they nail the walk up lib. So I call them over and go, Hey, would you rather do a walk up lib this year? Or walk up hands lib. And they both go, we'd rather do a walk up lib. So I do that. I film this like two minutes at practice. And I send it over to them. Like, we'd really like to do the walk up lib. I think it's, you know, and I give this whole explanation of why I think the walk up lib is better than a walk up hands lib. I say if you want to include walk up hands lib, include walk up hands lib, but don't not let us do walk up libs. Anyway, my yeah, I get my reply back. Jason, it's most likely just going to stay walk up hands lib. And I said, <laughs> that's fine. I just wanted to let you know how I feel. I figured it would stay that way. No big deal. It is what it is. We will go in train our kids how to do walk-up hands lives, right? Anyway, new score sheet comes out, get an email from Varsity, and it says, hey, we've made some changes to the score sheet. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, whatever. Let's see what it is. And I just checked to see, I didn't even check the co-ed stunt. I just checked if the ranges had changed at all. And well, all the ranges are the same. I kind of read through some ranges, but in general, the score sheet kind of looked the same. It said, oh, and we added bobbles. And I go, okay. And then later on in Facebook, I read that they changed co-eds. Now, if they changed co-eds, I had to go back to the email, went and looked it up. And lo and behold, they, they listened to your boy. They listened to me. Walk up libs are back. Damien, Destiny, you're welcome. Senior Black, you're welcome. Um, and anyone else who didn't want to train walk up hands libs, you can thank me later. So anyway, that's a well, win. Well, <laughs> you are never going to get what you're asking for if you don't at least try, right? I mean, right? all you can do is try. Yeah, I started a petition. Recall. <laughs> Sorry. Walk up That's hands lives. <laughs> yeah, recall walk up hands lives. <laughs> Sorry, for those of you not in California, we're in the middle of a recall right now, so it just cracks me up. Ready, here we go. <laughs> no, we're not talking politics. It just cracks no, me up. 
no, none, none, none. <laughs> but you know, we wanted to. Anyways, yeah, good for putting your two cents in. That's, I mean, <laughs> all you can do is try. You know, hey, so good deal. And I actually didn't think. I honestly didn't think anything had. I just thought, well, I'll just let them know. I'm assu- if more. I'm assuming they got a lot more emails than just mine to make them change them. I wasn't just me. But yeah. So that's going on. They brought back bobbles. So I think since you've been in cheer, they haven't actually had bobbles on the score sheet. So obviously we know what a bobble is, but you know, the kid bobbles and they, you know, that actually used to be a deduction. So it's no longer, or it wasn't a deduction. They took it out and apparently bobbles are back in this year. So, you know, I think they took it out the first time. Um, they were just, I feel like bobbles were kind of called inconsistently. And I kind of feel like that was the, like how the way the industry felt, the temperature of the industry yeah. is that bobbles are called in, um, inconsistently. Because you'd go to one event and they call it a bobble and you go to another event and some events would call it a fall and you go to another event and, and a bobble wasn't called as anything, right? And so I think it was just kind of inconsistent week to week. Uh, exactly what a bobble was. And so it seems like they've done a lot better job this time around actually defining what a bobble is. Like they have a whole list of things of, you know, if this happens, this is a bobble. If this happens, this is a bobble. So we'll see if that kind of helps out smooth, if that kind of smooths out, you know, the consistency amongst what is actually a bobble. So I remember Ashley's team Ashley had a J2 team back when we were at PCM. Really good. They won NCA that year and they go to the summit and they think they did like half up extensions, maybe half up QPs. And it like kind of like, eek, 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 like just a little bit, like you could tell it wasn't perfect, but in no universe would I've ever called that a bobble. Mm-hmm. And I remember they called it a bobble. They gave them the deduction and they end up not making finals, right? They won NCA. And they didn't make finals because of that little, you know, bobble because of that, you know, bobble deduction. So hopefully they smooth things out where we just have an understanding of what a bobble actually is. And, you know, we will. You're going to about to experience bobbles and hopefully we won't get double. That was the other thing that was happening. Teams are getting double dipped like. You lose, you get deducted on the bobble, and then they take off points in your technique, you know. And coach is like, "How can you hit me on both these areas?" So we'll see what happens. So a couple changes. Yeah, to the varsity I, sheet. hopefully, if um, you know they're they follow the guidelines of what what it is and what it isn't. Um, because I mean, some of the competitions that we have went through since the girls have been cheering. I mean, I've seen them. You know, Um, I mean, like you said, if it's just like a little thing, um, but I've seen the bigger ones and they don't look very clean. Um, but hopefully it'll go smoothly, um, and not be, you know, catastrophic of people calling them when they're not them. Yeah, for sure. And and I, I truly hope this, and and I saw this, this kind of ties into this, but I saw a, um, I got an email not too long ago within the last couple of weeks about a new about all of these event producers joining together to create the universal score sheet, right? So right now, people, pretty much every event producer is using a variation. They either use the varsity score sheet or they use a variation of the varsity score sheet with like little tweaks. Um, But I got an email the other day that said something about all these event producers coming together to form one score sheet that the industry will actually use, which would actually be great because I've said this on podcasts before. What coaches want are consistent scores from week to week. You know, I don't want to change my routine every other week because I'm going to a different competition. I want to have, I want to be able to compete on the same score sheet so I can keep my same routine so I can make the tweaks necessary throughout the year so that by the time we get to the events, you know, the big prestigious events that we really want to do well at, that our, team are, that our teams are in the best position to be successful, you know, and win and all those things. Um, and I don't want a new set of rules every week. You know, I don't want to, oh, this competition back handsprings are illegal, but this competition back handsprings aren't illegal. You know, I, I want to be able to go week to week and have the same, you know, the same thing over and over again. You know, what I want to change every week is 
is the actual event production that, oh, this competition gives, does this, and this competition does this, and, you know, makes us want to go to these different competitions to see what they offer. But the score sheet and the, and the rules, I need, I, I personally want those things consistent. Um, you know, so I, I say all that to say, you know, I hope that it all gets figured out. Like I hope that, cause my problem, my biggest problem isn't the score sheet. It's really the, the judge, it's not the judges. It is the disconnect between judges and coaches. That's where the disc, that's where I feel the biggest problem is, is that coaches think that this is difficult while judges don't think it's difficult or what judges consider difficult. Coaches don't consider difficult or what, I consider good technique. A judge doesn't consider tech good technique and vice versa. I kind of feel like that's where the big disconnect is between judges and, and coaches, why there's so much friction on those areas. Because again, like I said, I think this and they think that if we all get on the same page, as far as what good technique is, what yeah. is what is actually considered difficult, you know, then we could, you know, then the industry is in a, a better, um, a better place. Yo, hold on, my phone just dropped and it's buzzing. What's going on here? People are calling me. I'm getting calls in the middle of a middle of a podcast. I should have put my phone on Do Not Disturb like you. You're a lot more seasoned. You're a seasoned vet. <laughs> uh, I, you've been away. I'm still making rookie mistakes. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, right? Yeah, you know, I'm trying my best. But yeah, um, new divisions. USASF, that's what's going on. So um, have you heard about the new division? So how does that work out? No, um, I was, I'm curious to hear from you about that. Okay, so we'll talk about the new divisions a little bit. So here we go. I'm going to read this straight from the USASF. The 2022 Cheerleading Worlds will offer three new senior divisions. Limited extra small slash small all girl. The next division is limited extra small co-ed. And the third division is limited small co-ed. These limited divisions are reserved for programs reps represented by only one team at the cheerleading world championship. Teams will qualify for their world's bids as in the past competing in their traditional divisions. However, when registering for worlds, they will have the option to transfer to the appropriate limited division or remain in a traditional extra small, small extra small co-ed or small co-ed division. Um, note limited division options will only be offered at the world championships, not during the regular season events. So all that means, so they've, they've added three new divisions, right? Um, limited all girl, extra small co-ed and small co-ed or limited, all these say limited in front of some limited basically means that your program only has one team at the world championships. So if your program, if you are Jason Larkin's all-stars and you have one world's team, I can enter into a limited division. It means I'm only competing against other programs with one world's teams. If I have, if I'm Ashley all-stars and I have two world's teams, then I can't enter into this limited division. I have to compete in the traditional you know, senior divisions or international divisions um, like everyone else. So this is cool. Question. I um, Yeah, go ahead. So when it comes to limited, so say for reference, we have, uh, I don't know, say we have five teams because I don't know how many teams we have, but mm -hmm. say we have five teams and only one of them is a, only one of them is can potentially be a world's team. So would mm -hmm. we be considered like say senior uh, junior red, would they be considered a into the limited if we're just having them for worlds? So they would or only, because, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Or would it be because we have multiple other teams that we aren't in the, we don't qualify for the limited. No, so just a world team. So it's just a level level six or level seven team. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So if we had, so we had flyers back in the day, right? American cheer flyers. Um, they're a medium co-ed for a long time. Um, actually, we have two bronze medals in the all-girl division. Fun fact for all you guys out there. 
Um, right, but Flyers was the world's team. And if we ever decided to have Flyers and no other world's team, right, our program exactly the way it is and bring back Flyers, we would be eligible to go and compete in the limited, you know, small co-ed or co-ed or all-girl division, right? Okay. If we had Flyers and then we had, and then Flyers was so good that every other, you know, we were able to build up another world's program, right? We have two world teams. So we have Flyers and uh, Dryers. Then, then we can no longer compete in the, <laughs> in the world's, in the limited division. So I saw some things about this online. Um, you know, I saw one thing. I see it all the time. My mom says this all the time. I'm tired of these new divisions. My mom says this all the time. And my mom listens. So shout out to my mom. Your my mom, mom is awesome. <laughs> she wants to, she keeps saying, Jason, it's like a long, it's like a running joke in the family, right? Not in the family, just between us, I guess. Um, but she's like, when, when can I be on the podcast, Jason? Yay. And I go, <laughs> Brittany says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about we do a podcast takeover and I interview your mom about you? Maybe. No, well, here's what I told my mom. I go, no, no, you can't be on the podcast, mom, because because of your antiquated views on cheerleading, right? And it's because she has, because I know if, if she's ever on the podcast, she's going to say this. Hey, mom, what, what are your thoughts on the cheerleading industry? She's going to go, Jason, let me tell you, I miss the old days back. All these divisions, we don't need all these divisions, Jason. I miss the old days back when there is all these teams and everyone got their butts kicked by champion. Champion was the gym that we were part of growing up, right? Um, so she's like, I, I miss just back when we all had to compete against champion, and everyone had to lose. And in some respects, um, I do get that mentality as far as, as we keep on creating new divisions. But honestly, new divisions don't bother me because I like that. We, when we create new divisions, it's giving new athletes the opportunity to join the sport. And that's really what, what, you know, I want to do is give opportunity, new opportunities for new coaches to join the sport, new opportunities for new um, athletes to join the sport, new opportunities for, you know, new gym owners to decide that they want to, you know, open up a, a gym. You know, I think we have right now, we have a new program just started yesterday as of this recording, fundamentals, right? And fundamentals is our 10 week program built to introduce athletes to cheerleading, right? It's only 10 weeks. And that was not something that was offered way back in the day when I was cheering, but it, it gives an opportunity for these athletes to join the program, to find out if cheerleading is right for them and to, you know, to enjoy the sport at a low cost, you know, low pressure environment, low pressure for the coaches, low pressure for the, um, for the athletes who just truly want to go and have fun. And if, if I didn't have that option and I'll go ahead fundamentals, uh, we're gonna go to competition this weekend and this weekend we're competing against, um, Smoed. They'd all be like, that would not be any fun for anybody. It would not be fun for fundamentals to go against Smoed. It wouldn't be fun for Smoed to go against fundamentals. It wouldn't be fun for either any of the coaches, any of the parents, any of the owners, you know? And so I think to introduce new divisions to get, you know, 4.2, right? I remember when 4.2 came out and it's like, why do we need a 4.2, right? Um, level four stunting, level two tumbling. Why does all-star cheerleading need a 4.2? Well, because there's a bunch of high school cheerleaders who want to do all-star cheerleading who are, they're really good at stunting, but because they've never done all-star cheerleading before, their tumbling isn't the strongest. So they have this these really good stunts, not as good tumbling. And so where do we put these kids? So we put all these kids on level two where the stunts are like super basic for them, where now they're doing harder stuff at their high school football games and they're doing at their all-star cheer practice. Or mm -hmm. should we put them on there on a level four team where now they can't do any of the tumbling but they can do the stunts, you know? And so 4.2 is a great example of giving new athletes an opportunity to join the sport and join the sport of all-star cheerleading, not just cheerleading in general, but to join the sport of all-star cheerleading. And I just about trying to give athletes opportunities, you know, and, and, and again, I get the, 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 like the watering down of the, 
like trying to make everyone a winner. I'm not trying to make everyone a winner. I really wish they would have deeper divisions. Like what it, what bothers me more are division splits at competitions, mm-hmm. right? So not just a typical, not that there's a junior level one, a junior level two, and a junior level three. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me more is that there's a junior level one A, a junior level one B, and a junior level one C, right? And there's only three teams in each division, right? That bothers me. I'd rather have deeper divisions. I'd rather have deeper divisions at competitions, but I don't really mind the division. The divisions, I just, I, I more mind division splits, you know, but in, in you know, I get people want division splits because, you know, it's a lot better to say, <laughs> it's a lot better to say I got fifth place than 10th place, right? You know, we got last in both divisions, but, you know, this one was only out of five, so I don't have to, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of, I mean, I kind of agree with like, you know, the way your mom says it. Uh, I think there is one sometimes like I feel as a parent that there is one too many division splits. Like I think we, you said it on a podcast, many podcasts ago of, you know, like when you're, when the moms are, and I've been guilty of this too. So me included (laughs) when the moms Mm -hmm. are like, yeah, first place win. Well, there were, you were the only person in your division. Like, of course you're going to get first place. (laughs) But so I think like that, that kind of like stinks because I feel like sometimes like for us, like there's, you know, just us in our, in our division category, whatever splits. And then the another division that, that's, that technically could be the same division. There's only two teams. So it's like, okay, why aren't we in that? Like, I feel like it's too broken up. Yeah. Um, sometimes not all the time, but sometimes, I mean, no, if you're a junior level one, everybody should go. I mean, I don't really know what the like BC things stand for. I've never really even like looked into it, but mm-hmm. I definitely don't think that those should be there. Yeah. So yeah. What happens is if we go to any of the big competitions we go to, right. Spirit sports, um, USA will have them right? these bigger events. Once they get to a certain number, they can split the division. So you're all junior. You're all junior level one, medium junior level one. And then they decide, okay, there's 10 teams in this division. And then they split it. You're now junior level. There's like no difference between the teams besides they just decide to split it just to have two divisions now. Now there's junior level one A and you guys are over here and you guys are junior level one B and you guys are over here. And we're just going to split it really just for the sake of creating. Well, there's, there's two reasons why. First, they split it so there's more accurate scoring. Um, you, we've said this before. We said this earlier. The score sheet is already really, really tight. And so when you have, once you get past so many teams, are the scores really that accurate on that type of a score sheet? Can you really separate that many teams on that type of score sheet? You see it all the time, right? We see it all the time at Summit, how many ties there are at the Summit, right? These All these divisions are deep, 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 and not all of them, but right. A ton of them are deep, deep, deep. And in those divisions, they are, there's a tie, 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 tie because of how, so they split it up for one reason, because of how tight the scores are. And it's to try to have more accurate scoring in between the divisions. Um, And I think the other reason is just that people don't want to flat out lose. Now I would rather them not I don't mind deep divisions. I really don't. Um, shout out to American Cheer J Black 2019 Summit Champs. They won with 61 teams in their division, right? So 61 teams, no division splits, took them all out. Let's go. Yeah, um, there we go. So I I don't mind division splits. I get that, but you know, 61 teams is a lot of teams to look at. And it's like, yo, they could split this. Yeah, but see, I, I think of it and maybe, I mean, everybody thinks differently, but I think of it 61 teams and they won, like they busted their booties yeah. to win. Like if you're going to be the best, you have to compete against the best. And I, one of my friends told me that like years and years ago and they, I mean, they beat 61 teams. So yeah. I, that's just kind of how I feel, you know, like, I mean, if we have 15 teams in a division, so what we got 15 teams in a division like you want that first place go in there and try to win that first place i mean i would rather say we got third place out of 15 teams than oh we got third place out of five teams you know what i mean like i think it 
and that's just me personally. Um, so maybe Wait, somebody's no. listening and they'll but, change it. <laughs> but I do, but I do understand. And I'll say this, even though I'm not for it, I do understand, like I said before, that there are coaches who would rather say I got fifth out of five than 10th out of 10, you know, like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but anyway, but division it's so adding, adding new competitive divisions doesn't bother me. Right. If we're going to add a new yeah. 4.2 or the limit, like these new limited divisions don't bother me. Cause it's going to give, yeah. you know, I think this is a great opportunity for something like American cheer, right? We don't have a world's program anymore. Um, and I remember going to worlds a couple of years ago. And I said this on the podcast with Victor, I remember sitting in the stands watching finals and they take top 10 to finals, right? And watching finals. And I remember thinking, man, it would be impossible to start. If I just decided I'm going to start my own gym and move away, I'm going to move to Nebraska and I'm going to start my own gym, right? It'd be impossible to like make finals. It just seemed like watching those teams. I go, it's impossible. Like these teams are, it's like just, it's like the best of the best. I know that's what we're trying to decipher. You know, we're trying to find out the world championships. We're trying to find who the best of the best is, but it really is when you get to the point of saying, how would we even do this? You know, like people don't start running marathons if they don't think they can finish. Now, not everyone finishes, but people don't start running marathons unless they actually think they can finish. So I, you know, I remember just sitting there in the stands thinking it, the way cheer is, is far in advance that cheerleading is right now. It seems like it would be impossible to start from scratch and try to make finals. Right. Um, like it'd be a long road ahead. And I remember like, man, these, cause the teams are, most of them are franchise mega gyms, the ones that make finals. Right. Um, and yeah. if they're not the franchise mega gyms, they're just the, you know, I remember watching one division and I, I will say eight out of the 10 teams were franchise mega gyms. Right. And that was a few years ago. So I'm not sure what finals looked like last year, but it would give, it is a good, in my opinion, Everyone can disagree with me if they want. But it gives an opportunity for, like I said, a gym like us, if we decide that we wanted to um, go into a world's division, give us an, a, a lane where we feel like we were competing against um, teams of our um, of our same resources, right? You know, I mean, yeah. that's why they have division one, division two, II, division three, you know, football, basketball, you know, schools, baseball, right? So you can compete against team with your same resources. And not that we should take an easy route, you know, the easy road or, or any of these things, but it at least gives, again, it gives the opportunity for, for gyms to compete against teams with, with like resources. So anyway, don't bother me really. Um, I just like giving new opportunities for, for athletes. And, you know, cause at the end of the day, I remember we're at PCM, we're trying to find a team. We're trying to find what division, what world's division we were going to enter into. And we're trying to decide. And I remember me and the owner, Jared, like at the same time, we're like, well, what, what, div- what about this division? Oh, that division is so hard. Well, this is that division so hard. And like simultaneously me and Jared both said it's, they're all hard. Like all the divisions at world are, there's no easy division at worlds. You know, they're all hard. So, yeah. you know, anyway, that's just me. I rambled, but. Well, it was information. Definitely good information. All right, mom. Brittany's going to interview you on the podcast. So. Yes. I like your mom. I, I we're friends on Facebook and. Uh, I'm sure you two are. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you, uh, yeah, yeah. Woo, I'm always like smashing that like button, loving it. Ooh, yeah. So, uh, definitely love her. So what oh, else for those we got you, going on? For those of you on YouTube right now, don't forget we have a YouTube channel now. Let's talk to your <laughs> podcast. Um, my, my buddy DJ called the other day and he's like two times you've been mentioned on the podcast. So this is three times you've been mentioned on the podcast, DJ, because I had to take a sip of water. So shout out. Oh, uh, University All-Stars. They gave me a sticker. Um, that's pretty cool. But um, yeah. Um, what else are we talking about? Um, I guess we'll both watch. That thing has got people 
I haven't watched it yet. I'm sure I will. I'm going to save all my comments for the dark side of cheerleading until yeah. I guess we both watch it and we can talk about it and all those things. But, um, but yeah, I guess we'll we can get to into... watch it and do, and then do a review. I haven't watched it at all. I've seen a couple, um, parents that are from our gym. They've like posted about it, but, uh, you know, stay at home, mom, wife. I am so busy. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> 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 have you seen that uh, TikTok? How, which <laughs> like, one? Have you seen the TikTok where it's it's always it's a husband and it's um it's 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 talking it's can, like stay at home mom. What do you need to rest for? You stay at home all day, and then um you know it cuts to her like being interviewed, right? And she's like, Yeah, I killed yeah. Like, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think I have seen that. Um, but you know, it's a busy stinking life. I'm telling you what. I, I think you. I'm busier now than I was when I worked full time. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be that. I'm trying to do that stay-at-home husband. At the same time, yeah. Ashley's trying to be this. I think both of us are trying to be stay-at-home parents and just, you know, I guess that's what. Well, my husband's now. not yeah. too. My husband's not too far behind me. He's a, you know, he's doing all. He's got the. I don't know if everybody's into like cryptocurrency or whatever. Mm. You know, so he's doing all that kind of research and stuff. But uh, hey, it leaves more time for the podcast. I mean, yeah, yeah, I feel now like now you can call me any. You, I remember the first time you called me and you were like, "I don't feel bad for calling you at nine in the morning because you're not at work now. You don't have a job." <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. How Wait, about so the question of the week? Oh, let's ahead. do the question of the week. But this is totally random. Are you are you any different than an esthetician? Or no? Uh, yes. Um, so an esthetician. I mean, most people already know this, so I don't really care. But I, I um, don't know this at all. An esthetician, so they went to school, right? It's um, mm-hmm. like a certain amount of hours. I can't remember. I looked into it. Um, they went to school for it. Um, and an esthetician is more um, like facials, microdermabrasions, those type of things. Um, mm-hmm. An esthetician can do lash extensions. And technically, in the state of California, you should be a at least a licensed esthetician or a licensed cosmetologist to do lashes. Um, but there are astronomically so many people that are at least in Bakersfield that do them and don't have a license. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not like I'm going to be pulling so in I just, six I just, a year. I just, I just blew your cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if gets, yeah, you did. Dang it. Um, I plug you earlier, but, blow your cover later. <laughs> I'll make it up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But if it goes on, um, if it does like go well, we have decided that I'll probably we're I'm in limbo between going to school to be an esthetician or going back to school to um, be an RN. Um, but I was. don't want to be like a hospital RN. I want to go into like the aesthetics part of it. Um, gotcha. So, but we'll see. We, you know, you never know time. I mean, I like to consider myself still young. So I feel you. you are still young. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a post the other day. It said like, you don't want to get your degree. You're 28 and don't want to get your degree because it's four years. And in four years, you're going to be 32. I said, but in four years, you're still going to be 32. So you might as well do it, you know? So yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Question, Question of, the week? of the week. Let's do okay, it. Okay. So this is from, I'm going to paraphrase. This is from um, someone that used to be here at our gym, I believe. And now they're in Florida. Um, they are only allowed to watch practices the first week of the month mm-hmm. and private. So the rest of the month, the rest of the three weeks of the month, they can't, their practices are closed and um, they're kind of, kind of wanting to get your take on it and my take on it. Um, but they, they can watch privates. So there we go. Um, how, how do you like, they kind of think they kind of want to know like what would maybe be a reason behind it. Um, if yeah. you can think of any, there we go. And real quick. So question of the week, if you have a question of the week, you're a parent, you're a coach, you're an athlete, maybe you're listening. Um, definitely be sure to DM myself or Brittany. You can see, uh, what am I? Jason Larkins on Instagram. What's your, uh, what's your IG? Uh, B dot more with three underscores. Well, three underscores just looks like I one, couldn't one get underscore. to. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> everybody took B more. So yeah. So put B, don't be less. 
All right. So yeah. B.more3 <laughs> more underscores. Yeah. Send us those questions. DM us. Um, and, you know, we legit answer the questions. So, you know, if there's a good yeah. question, it'll, it'll get on air for sure. So um, closed practices, they can watch. They have closed practices three weeks out of the month. The first week, last week of the month, they can watch practice and they can watch their daughter. Right. Yeah, first week of lessons. the month and then last month. All right. So here we go. A couple of reasons not to have, or a couple of reasons to have closed practices. And this is a, I've gone, I've been on, I've now been on both sides of the fence in this discussion. And I'll let you know where I am at currently um we used to do them at the old gym at pcm and you know our reason was it gives for a more focused practice right and we came over to pc or came over from pcm to american and so yeah we're going to do closed practices um during the week of competition so athletes can you know remain focused i think the big thing is i see with as far as closed practices are concerned, or sorry, focus athletes. So let's talk about this. We have the athletes being focused. We have, we have parents getting rowdy in the viewing room, the lobby. We have choreography and we have just flat out coaches don't want to be held accountable. And so let's, we'll talk about all those things. Um, Athletes being focused. So I, I noticed this, and this still happens to this day, that athletes at practice, when their parents are there, tend not to be as focused. Um, they will, if their stunt drops, the first place they look in, the first place they look is the lobby, right? And I go, oh, mom is sitting upstairs today. Okay, mom's sitting downstairs today, right? And stunt drops, look at their parent. Um, if, if they have an injury, they may or may not milk it a little bit more when their parent is there, right? Or they'll like look into the lobby and like kind of, you know, grab their shoulder or something. Like it, it hurts, right? Right. And then, you know, mom emails and says, her shoulder's really hurting, right? Something like that, right? So, so close practices, I think with coaches with the best intentions, right? Coaches, you flat out trust and you flat out trust with the best intentions in mind. Well, close practices because they want the athletes just to be more disciplined and focused at practice because there is a lot of athletes looking into the lobby. Um, I have really gotten away from closed practices. Um, that, that I think that's kind of a valid reason, but I don't really use it as a reason anymore only because athletes have to compete in front of their parents, you know? And so it's just a part of when I wasn't as good of a coach, I needed to have the athletes as focused as I needed them to pull. I needed them to pull a little bit more weight um, where I was slacking a little bit. Right. If I wasn't able to hold their attention, then I needed to rearrange practice so that I could have maximum attention on me. Right. So, but as I've gotten better as a coach, that's allowed me to do other things I probably wouldn't have allowed back in the day, right? Which is one's close practices. Um, you know, I let athletes miss practice a lot more frequently, um, really just because I, I'm really confident. You can, can you hear me right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, my computer popped up or something. Um, I think it is my internet. <laughs> it said your internet is unstable. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Guys, I filmed this. You, you probably could tell this is the closet and the routers. Wait, guys, I'm getting Ashley's building me a new studio. Studio. It's our guest bedroom that we're turning into an office. And one of these weeks, you're going to see a glorious background behind me that Ashley's surprising me with. So, anyway, but the point is all right, sorry about that. My computer got all weird. And so we're back. Anyway, um, I think I was saying, we have, uh, because I'm more confident in my coaching, like I've let athletes miss a lot more practice than I would have back in the day, just because I feel like, okay, with our talent and, you know, our talent as coaches, our talent, you know, with the team that we have, we can make up that time later and let these athletes have 
a little bit more of a, a life outside of cheerleading. And I kind of feel the same way as far as closed practices are concerned. Like I've become a better coach um, and we have more structure, which allows us to hold their attention longer where I don't feel like athletes are being as distracted by their parents. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you on the podcast my on youtube <laughs> yeah well yeah well on the podcast they have no idea we're laughing if you're watching it on youtube yeah <laughs> i have no idea how that happened anyway my so ring light clear. really bright <laughs> i was like is that me <laughs> oh my gosh we're a mess today guys this oh. is why Guys, if you want to support the channel, <laughs> help us get some equipment that works. Oh, you can go to our merch store. <laughs> you can buy a Let's Talk to Your Podcast t-shirt. You can, hey, we have a corporate sponsor now. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to make this episode. We're still trying to work everything out, but we're going to figure it out. So if you want to support the podcast, make small donations, we'd appreciate it. And if you don't want to donate any, any funds, Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Yeah. But anyway, I think that was my sign. They want me to move on. So keeping athletes focused in the lobby. Um, choreography is a great instance when I think that choreography is probably like what I still say, hey, I think close practices are best for the program during choreography. Um, big reason why is, is – the choreographers don't really know the kids. And so what happens is the choreographer comes in, choreographer kind of makes the routine and then, or the pyramid or whatever. And then they come in the next day. Like we come in as coaches the next day and go, we like that outline or that shell or whatever. And we're going to change this. Or they put a kid somewhere. And I think what happens is, you know, I, I think pyramid's a great example. Every year we have Troy come in and shout out to uh, coach Troy. Um, so if you don't know, if you don't, if you don't have someone doing your pyramids right now, you need to get coach Troy. Cause he's a man, magic all-stars, you know, let him know Jason sent you 10% off. Um, <laughs> use the promo like, no. He's like, no, there's not a 10%. I'm not sure where he got that from. Um, but no, but he comes in and every year he goes, he feels that the pyramid should look like the flyers, right? The pyramid should look like the flyers. So he always looks at the flyers and he gets his hands and he looks at them and he goes, okay. And I'm not sure what the pyramid should look like the flyers means, but he says it every time he comes in and I see him looking and I go, Hey, Troy, these two girls right here, they're these stunt groups right here are solid. You can use them in any trick you want to do. Those two groups will do it. Um, that group right there, you're going to want to stay away from that group. Um, just stay away from that group, Troy. You're not, they're going to give you a headache all day. Just don't use that group right there. Right. And, and what Troy does is he looks, he looks at the flyers and goes, yeah, Jason, but that girl looks the way this pyramid should look. I go, yeah, Troy, please don't use, please don't use that sunk group. And he'll go in and I go, and I don't watch choreography. I go, in my office, I close the door and I try to let the choreographers work and do their thing. You know, no one likes their boss, you know, looking over their shoulder, right? Their, their boss, right? But so I go in the office, close the door, let choreographers do their job. And I come back out and, you know, and Troy will have the kid who I said, please do not go anywhere near that girl. I have her in every hard TikTok, full up, you know, whatever. I made up a trick, Jason, and she's doing it. I'm like, oh, okay, right? And so, you know, and then if you're Susie's mom and Susie has a great stunt group and you see that Susie uh, doesn't have the glamorous part of the pyramid, right? And you're like, what, man, Susie's stunt group's been really solid, you know? Well, what I'll typically get is an email that says, Susie, has been the most consistent stunt group all season long. She has not missed any practices. And why is she, you know, only doing this in the pyramid? And, you know, I think to myself, that's a very, you know, she has a valid point, 
But the reason why she's not doing anything in the pyramids is because I didn't choreograph the pyramid. It was Troy choreographed the pyramid. He just put kids where he wanted to put kids. But and what typically happens is that Ashley and I will come in and go, we like the pyramid, but now we're going to switch the pyramid so that it reflects the talent of our athletes, right? So we can highlight, you know, the team's strengths. And that happens every year. It happens with pyramid choreography and it happens with uh, routine choreography. So I think that having parents at choreography when things are so like wet still, like not set in stone is just, we're just kind of inviting unnecessary emotion into, into this whole thing because we already know, like, well, literally, I'll watch the team mark through a routine. Where, you know, Brendan gets done. I watch them mark through. And as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, I'm going to change that kid right there. I'm going to change that formation right there. Okay, I'm going to change. Like, I like the outline and, and I like this part, but there's things that we want to do as coaches. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's best not to get caught up in those conversations while it's so, I tell this to the kids every single year. When we first start stunting, hey guys, we're going to put together stunt groups. And I, and I say, 100%, these stunt groups are going to change. Guys, it's today. We have 20 kids missing today. So these stunt groups are going to change. Don't go home telling your mom how much you hate your stunt group. These stunt groups are going to change tomorrow and they're going to change all summer long, right? And I say it in the most stern voice possible so they understand that the stunt group they're in today isn't their stunt group for the rest of their life, right? Inevitably, someone goes home and goes, I hate my stunt group. And then I get a parent that says, she doesn't really like her stunt group. Why is this kid doing that? And, uh, you know, anyway, so that's a reason. That's one, that's a valid reason why I feel like, uh, well, it's, it's why we close practices, right? For choreography. And I feel like it's a very valid reason. Um, Let's see, what are the other two reasons why I close practices or why gyms close practices in general? Um, parents getting rowdy in the lobby. We've done this several times at American. Um, parents are in the lobby. They got their little clicks and they're chirping. They're talking about why is this kid on this team? Why is this kid flying? Why is this kid basing my daughter? Why is this kid doing this? You know, how they make that team? Oh, I heard this, right? They're so far behind, you know, all that stuff. Oh, they're nowhere as good as they were last year. The toxicity, you've got to shut that down in your gym. You can't have it. So we've done that several times where a particular team, if a, if a particular team is being toxic in the lobby, then we'll, you know, have the parents take a little break for, you know, a couple of weeks, a month or so, and then go, okay, are you guys ready to come back to practice? Right now we don't say it like that, but we'll just say, hey, um, no more practices until practices are closed until the showcase. Right. Um, because a lot, you know, the parents coach Troy actually taught me this. He coach Troy was so good at, he always used to say, you got to see past the mess. And what happens is you go, you go to the store, you decide that you're going to buy um, some cake, some fun Fetty, and you're mixing up your fun Fetty and you're like, mixing it up and you put it on all your ingredients you start stirring, you start stirring, you start stirring. And then you look at the cake, you know, what's in your little bowl. And then you look at the box and you look at your bowl and you look at the box and you look at the bowl, you look at the box, you look at the bowl, you look at the box. And you go, man, this doesn't look like this. And when this doesn't look like this, when it still looks like it's in the bowl and it doesn't look like what you purchase, that's when you start complaining and talking and you're, you know, all disgruntled in the lobby. And Sometimes it's better if parents are just talking to not let them watch the process of actually baking a cake and let the cake bake a little bit before they can actually watch practice. Because then they think, oh, man, this looks a lot better. Yeah, yeah. you know, you just got to give some of these things time. You know, these some of these things have to bake, right? Um, last reason to close practice or the last reason why gyms close practices, and this is probably where I will get pushed back from coaches, and I feel that coaches just flat out don't want to be held accountable is they want to be able to do what they want at practice. They want to be able to yell at kids without parents seeing it. They want to be able, they want to be able to do whatever they want at practice without anyone looking over their shoulder. Um, 
you know, I've said this before, but if you were, you know, at work, everyone at work occasionally checks their Facebook, right? Checks their Instagram at work. You know, they're getting work done. They're being very productive. But, you know, they're like, ah, oh, you know, I've been working for 30 minutes straight. I'm going to go check, see what's on the gram right now. And they go and they go and they go, okay, cool. They'll comment back and then they'll get back on and they'll start working again, right? And then they'll, you know, an hour later or whatever, I'm going to get on Facebook real quick and just check it out, right? And I think that if your boss were sitting in the office with you the entire time, you wouldn't check Facebook or Instagram or any other social media platform one time to check a status update. You would diligently work the entire time and not, you know, get off script. And I kind of feel like that's why coaches close practices at times is so that they can do what they want. And, and again, I'm talking about coaches with the best of intentions. Um, but still, they could still like kind of just, you know, maybe yell at a kid when they might have not have yelled at a kid if if their parent were sitting in the lobby, right? Or, you know, just stuff like that. So anyway, be more. What you got? What's your, what do you thought? What are your thoughts on closed practices? Um, they don't bother me at all. Um, and I think they probably don't bother me. <laughs> I don't know. There's just something like, I want to be surprised. I don't want to be down there. Me personally, like there's no reason for me to be down there every single day. Um, I trust our coaches at our gym and um, I know that my girls have like a little bit better bond with some than others. And if something is truly wrong, they are comfortable um, to go to them and say something to them, whether, you know, it be girl problems or they got their feelings mm -hmm. hurt or they're not feeling good or, or whatever the case may be. There is, I, I know there's a coach there that my girls are very comfortable with and close practices. I think it's, it's almost better for me as a parent not to be there watching. Mm -hmm. Like you had kind of said there, the athletes are always looking in the lobby at their parents and my girls would do that too. When I went to practices too. So I feel like me not being there helps them concentrate more and helps them perform better. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there is a saying that, um, I mean, I don't know exactly how the saying goes, but like the kids always act the worst around their moms. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I'm con and I, I agree with that. Um, I, in my opinion, I think that my girls are very respectful, um, polite children and their kids. So they have their moments, but they act better when I'm not there. So I feel mm -hmm. like they're more focused, they're more disciplined, um, they're more likely to do what they're supposed to do if I'm not sitting in the lobby. Yeah. And I, I don't know what they think I'm going to do by me sitting in the lobby. I mean, they think I'm going to like run out there and yell, you know, uh, uh, one of the coaches or something. That's not me. But I think it also gives them, it gives you a, a, as a parent an opportunity to be surprised at their growth and their progress that they mm -hmm. have made. So, you know, for this uh, person in particular, you only, you only get to watch the first week of practices, but then you have three weeks that you don't get a watch. So when it comes mm -hmm. back around to the new month, you're probably surprised at the progress that they, they've made. I mean, I know for me, that would be two or six practices and there could mm -hmm. be a lot that happened in those six practices and be proud and be happy of the progress that the team and your athlete has made. So if yeah. the close practices don't bother me, what's one bit at all? I mean, I think that they're great for, like you were saying, like the parents getting a little rowdy um, because there it is. There are parents that do that. Um, <laughs> she said, well, there are parents that do that. <laughs> there are. I mean, uh, you know, a lot. But uh, I don't I don't think it's a big deal. But, you know, I'm also a parent that it's not a big deal to me. And I know there are other parents, you know, at our gym that want to watch their kids every day. And that's great. But um they're going to have, we're going to have to break the cord eventually. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, it's a crazy, you know, we live in a, uh, a different world right now where, and it's, it's a crazy thing as far as what perspective 
I don't know how much gyms should actually close practices, but at the same, at the same time, from a parent's perspective, right? It's like, I don't know how much a parent should actually come to practice. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure if parents or I'm not sure if Jim should actually totally close off practices to parents and say, parents, you don't have the option of actually coming to practice. Right. Um, versus, you know, I think this is actually a good balance, right? We allow parents to come to practice and then have parents who decide that they're not going to come to practice. Right. Um, yeah. But it's like, you know, anyway, but that's our opinion. If you have a question, you want to send it in, send it in and send, you know, be more, don't, don't be less with those questions. Right. Um, yeah. Be more. I got the, the cheer coach question of the week for you. Oh, great. Here we go. So, um, few couple months ago walking through i'm at the gym bailey and claire are like hey jason look we got we got twin basing uh, twin are they both basing oh she's basically she's flying i'm like man i <laughs> i do a podcast with her mom you better give that kid this special treatment so how do you feel you got one you have one daughter flying the other one basing now so you know are we gonna have to close practices because of you <laughs> no, because I don't even go to practices. <laughs> um, well, first of all, let's just address the special treatment because there is no special treatment whatsoever. Uh, I mean, sometimes I wish there was. Sometimes I wish I had an input on the competition schedule. Okay. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> Uh, so Brittany, definitely no special Brittany, treatment. You you signed off on it. It was your idea. <laughs> Final decision right here. You know. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, no special treatment here. It's all you American families. I don't know anything before you do. So stop asking me. <laughs> um, as far as flying and basing, I will say this. My house is still happy. My house is still content. There's no fighting between sisters. Um, Rylan is the one basing. She has always had this crazy little girl strength. Um, I mean, at four and five years old, she had her sister on her shoulders, walking her around the living room. Um, when we would move furniture, yes, like impressive. when we would move furniture, Rylan would help me because Kinsley's like, oh, I can't lift it. Yeah. To this day, she's like, the trash is too heavy, Rylan. Can you do it? <laughs> mm. But she has got Kinsley has gotten better. But I also, so I think it's great for her. I know she wanted to base uh, last season, and um, you know uh, that was when Coach Christina was here, and she's like, she told me she wanted to base, and I'm like, she's full of it. She just wants to try it out. <laughs> she's full of it. She is. Um, I know she's looking she, like a true cheer mom. She's full of it. Don't listen to that kid. <laughs> <laughs> this kid's flying. <laughs> it is the truth, you know. Um, I know she is excited to be basing. Um, yes, you know, she still is flying a little bit, not um, as much as she did last year. Um, she needs some things that she needs to work on as far as her stretching. And we have her in the classes and everything like that. But the mom side of me has me thinking what coach doesn't like a well-rounded athlete mm -hmm. um the twins would love to make a higher level next year and that's you know another reason why we have them in as you know a tumbling class and a flight school class they want to, they want to progress to make another team next year and this is just another learning opportunity for rylan and another thing to add to her like resume as i call it mm -hmm. um if you have an athlete that comes to you and she says, well, I only fly, but you have an athlete that says, oh, I fly and I've based before. What, what coach doesn't like a well-rounded athlete. Yeah. And I think it's just something that is going to excel her in the cheerleading world that she can base and she can fly. And yeah. you, you, she can't stop learning, but there's no animosity at home. She doesn't complain about it. And I think she kind of likes it that she gets to like 
use her strength for something good. You know, um, yeah. I think it's a little bit harder for her. I know, um, last practice I had watched like the last like five minutes and I saw mm-hmm. their stunt group like fumble and mm-hmm. I asked her, I'm like, what the heck happened? And she's like, oh, my flyer wouldn't squeeze. And I was like, well, do you remember when everybody was telling you to squeeze? And she's like, <laughs> right. but I squeezed. I'm like, I don't know. So, no, <laughs> debatable. <laughs> I'm just kind of like letting it ride. You know, um, you guys are coaches for a reason and you know uh their coaches of their team put her there for a reason um and they know what she can do and what where they need her the most so i have no control i'm i mean i didn't even know for like a month that she was basing so yeah (laughs) clearly it's not a big deal i mean um but it'll just be better for her in the long run so you know uh now kinsley on the other hand uh run <laughs> she'd be dropping stunts <laughs> like crazy <laughs> no but it's good. you mentioned like just being well um just versatile right um and, you know it's a, especially at this age as the kids move up the levels you know they go from being on a junior team to a senior team and you know and when they make those jumps they have to fly on one and base on the other you know we have um you know kid youth black is a good example because our kids that cross over to and from youth black like always do a different position um mm-hmm. right we have kids at back spot on youth black but the base on on j red or they fly on on j red but base on youth black or they have to you know main on this team and second on this team or whatever right and so every year we have a new group of kids and we have to figure out how we're going to put these kids together and sometimes we need kids to fly sometimes we need kids to main sometimes we need kids a second sometimes we need them to back and you know, if you're only stuck, if you're only going to be, you know, one thing, which it's okay just to say, I'm, I'm, I'm really good at this, but you had better be really good at that, you know? Um, cause you're not really good at that. Cause here are your options. Let's just say it's a flyer. If you're a flyer and can only fly, if you don't fly, you're not doing anything right. And that, that's your option. Um, but if you're a flyer and a base and you're not flying, well then at least you get the base now. Right. But if you're a flyer and you don't base and you're not flying, well, now you're standing, right? So anyway, um, I think we got to go be more. <laughs> I think we're, I think we're getting there. I'm like texting the girls from my watch. I'm like, get ready for two. We have to leave. <laughs> if you're you late, go. it's Jason's fault. I'll give you a hall pass. You'll be good. <laughs> but yeah, so be more. I guess we'll catch up on the, let's do the quote. We, we'll do two quotes of the week next week. No. Yeah, that sounds good. This is a good quote of the week. I really like this one. Yeah, nothing to do with anything. Um, not okay. nothing like we have to talk about this week, but it's a really good quote of the week. So you guys know what to do. Smash the like button, share, subscribe. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Be more glad that you're back. And um, you know, tune in to episode 28 because um, you know, we might be talking about the dark side of cheerleading or not. We'll see what we talk, actually talk about. But um, Hopefully. yeah, for sure. Um, be more. We haven't done this in a while. Thanks Let's for having me back. I'm so excited. And we uh we'll see how let's see how many likes we can get this week. Let's make it like a goal, you know, or something. I don't know. 12. <laughs> uh I was gonna go with like at least 50. 50 likes. Like if you're listening, like this. No one listens to the end. No one's listening to us right now. No. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. We're out. Boom. <laughs>